Warning. Patrick Davis is a country music singer-songwriter originally from Camden, South Carolina, who now lives in Nashville, Tennessee. While Patrick is a USC alumnus and a huge Gamecock fan, he is definitely not a professional interviewer. Enjoy. Well, I barely slept a wink last night Cause I could hardly wait To wake up this morning on game day So as soon as I heard that rooster crow I set off on the road Straight down I 20 to the capital city Where the pretty Carolina girls go Cause I've heard all the stories Of the great George Rogers And out back in 1980 He made the whole nation holler And I've seen that photograph Of young Steve Tanny Hill up in old Death Valley, signing his name on the field. Yeah, and I love to hear 2001 and Phil Williams, Bryce Rock. Yeah, what else can I say? Until my dying day, I'll be a South Carolina Gamecock. You're watching Patrick Davis and his big old Gamecock great interview. I'm here right now with uh, with my good friend Corey Miller, who was a uh, amazing Gamecock football player and also played for nine years in the NFL with the New York Giants and the Minnesota Vikings. Uh, thank you for coming out here, Corey, and hanging out with me, man. Good Always to see you, my a brother. pleasure, Pete Diddy. What was your favorite part of game day at USC? I think driving in on the bus. I, I really love that feeling as we came down, uh, you know, the road and you saw the fans and pulling in into the back parking lot there and. and having the fans greet you. They all yeah. fired up. They've been here, you know, five, six, seven in the morning tailgating and doing their thing and knowing that they're ready for us to come out and ball. Pre-game, what were you like? I was more reserved because I, I thought I, I, I was a guy about vision. I really believed in vision and seeing myself making big plays, seeing myself doing something special on the field. So I was quiet on the bus ride, just looking, thinking, meditating. In the locker room, you know, some guys had the rap music and different things that get them going for me. It was just about more meditation. Yeah. But when I went outside, I changed. It's like I transformed. And a lot of people always say, man, you're so quiet in person, but you're an animal on the football field. There's something about the field, people understand the lights. I get up for every game. Yeah. I mean, even if it was, you know, the Citadel, yeah. I want to play. I mean, I it just, some guys can, you know, waver like that. Speaking of the Citadel. Now, yeah, please don't ask me that question. <laughs> but my, my thing is, you know, <laughs> You get up for it. I just believe when the lights are on, baby, it's showtime. Why do you think uh, the vast majority of beautiful South Carolina women attend and cheer for the University of South Carolina versus, say, Clemson? Well, all the beautiful women, except one, goes to South Carolina. There is wife. one very special yeah, in your life. That was the only one. That was, that was, that was, that was, that was, and, they, and then she had to get a special exemption to go to Clemson, actually. Yes, you know, like, absolutely. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Steve Tannehill's mullet was A, amazing, B, a product of the 90s C the greatest thing to ever touch the back of a Gamecock jersey or D all of the above I will say D when you think about the long hair he had a style uh, the way he played the game kind of reckless a uh, quarterback uh, with a linebacker mentality it uh, resembled who he was uh, as a person, as a person yeah. Yeah. yeah is there any better entrance in all of sports than the University of South Carolina's entrance into williams Bryce Stadium to 2001 no, no. 2001 is, you know, you guys are, that are fans, you see it and you hear it, but to have the uniform on and, and to go out and, and understand, man, when you just you hear it, it's chill bumps. I get chill bumps just thinking about it. It's just, it's amazing. And, and un, really, that's one of the big things that brought me to South Carolina because when I would hear that and I would see a guy by the name of Tony Guyton who would run out back in the day and he'd go to the middle of the field and he'd do his dance and he'd get the crowd, 70-some thousand back then. And, you know, it's one of those things, man, you can't, you can't substitute it. You know, people talk about rubbing a stupid rock run down. That's nothing. 2001 is what it's all about. Did you know from a very young age that you always wanted to be a Gamecock? No, no. I, my my high school football coach played linebacker here as well in the '60s, okay. so mid to late '60s. Uh, Al Lusher and uh, uh, my whole coaching staff 
uh, were Gamecock fans. So I, I, I grew up, as far as when I started playing football, knowing about the, who South Carolina was. I came to camps and came to games. And, you know, I was a guy that back in the day, we didn't have star ratings. I was a super prep All-American out of high school, little town in Pageland, and, and uh, could have gone to school anywhere I wanted to. But uh, I, again, I fell in love, and, and I still to this day, and this guy maybe don't know this, but uh, Tony Guyton in 2001 was a big draw for me, and it just, he, it's what I like, fire, intense, great crowd, and, and it was a place also that my family could come and see me yeah. uh, on an hour and a half drive down the road, and they could be here. So uh, what do you consider to be your greatest moment ever as a Gamecock? I think one of my, my greatest game had to be actually away from here was at Georgia. Uh, I had 16 tackles and two sacks, a big game there, but... You don't uh, remember really the stats, really. No, nah, I don't remember about a lot, you. It's you not know. about the stats. But I tell you, you know, people ask me all the time. Like some people can recall, I can't. I couldn't. Mm -hmm. I, I was so emotionally in the games. I I didn't recall a whole lot. But uh, you know, to answer your question though, every moment was great for me. If you could go back in time and relive one moment from your playing days at USC, what would that be? If I can go back in time, I would go back to that Citadel game. If I could have a different coach yeah. and put him on the sideline to give us a different scheme. Yeah. Because you don't understand, I hear that today. And uh, my wife's father is a Citadel graduate, oh. played at the Citadel. Oh, and, uh, you know, he just passed away, but he would always hold that over me. And I go up to his house and he go, I got the tape in there if you want to watch that game. And I'm like, I don't want to watch it. I, I, I never will watch that game. But. But if I can go back, you feel and like change. it was. You feel like the scheme was just because it was an option to attack. No, was, absolutely. Yeah. And I they mean, were in their scheme was just. It was a crazy scheme because you had myself, Gerald Dixon. You talking about two ends that played almost twenty years in the National Football League combined. Yeah. That you put us in a wide nine technique, which is outside the tight end, where we were jetting up the field. They're running dives, quarterback keeper between the tackles all day long. So your two best players, they oh, take out tackles. of the game. Yeah, you're going. And uh, I, I, I never will forget standing over here. In, in the room next to the locker room and having to speak and address the media because, you know, it was my senior year and being a captain and everything, you know, I always was the guy that chose to talk to the media. But, you know, I was so angry and I wanted to sit there and go, you know what, Sparky Woods, Rick Wet it's your fault. You know, because you shouldn't lose to a game, uh, to a team like the Celtics. It should happen. Yeah. But, um, you know, give them credit. They played probably the greatest football game ever. We were in a bad scheme. And I often score 35 points. They just happen to score 38. Uh, and uh, but if I can go back in time, that's one that's moment I would change because that that. that's going to live with me for the rest, the rest of my of life. Your life. Yeah. yeah. What what's, what does that mean like to know that you were a captain of the University of South Carolina football team? Well, it's it's big because that means you're respected by your peers. Mm -hmm. People look at you as a leader. Mm -hmm. And today, you know, when you walk down in in this building, it's called the Hall of Captains, and you can see. 1990 a picture on the wall that's a special hallway because it's saying in this hallway there were special people i really appreciate the guys voted me the captain and, and uh, it always you know that picture even after we're dead and gone will still as long as the world exists we'll be in those hallways yeah right. given our total domination of clemson over the past two years do you believe that our cousins from the upstate will ever beat us again well, I, I'm, I'm praying that that don't happen again. I, but if I can just kind of be a prophet here and look and say, hey, let me look and see what God's doing in the future. Well, one thing I can tell you that South Carolina is just a better football team right now. Yeah. South Carolina uh, has better players right now, better coaching right now. And, um, and, you know, when you look at the coaching, it's a no-brainer. Yeah. You know, what coach loses to a real estate agent? It just don't <laughs> happen. Playing in the NFL, what was that like? Beautiful. Um, Every kid dreams of that, you know, you're playing in the fields of Pageland and tackle a man with the football and, you know, you, you want to get there. And for me, from a family of 11, you know, that was, I had to get there to try to help my family out of their situation. But, but you're right, it was always a dream. And, and that's why I always believed in vision. You know, before you can accomplish something, you got to see something. You know, you got to see yourself in a place of excellence. And, and that's what I did. Uh, you know, that's what I said. I didn't need the rah-rah uh, things. I just, I, I knew uh, I had a privilege of playing this game that I love so much. And, and then finally one day, you know, you open your eyes and you're in training camp or you're sitting in your locker and next to me, you know, especially the, the year the Giants just won the Super Bowl and I watched them beat Buffalo. And then, you know, a few months later, here I am 
You know, I'm 57, Lawrence is 56, so my lockers are next door. Carl Banks is right there. You send some, some NFL players, Phil Sims across the way, and, and it's kind of like, man, I've arrived, and, and it's the greatest feeling. I can tell you, New York is the greatest city. Uh, you're talking about pro sports, you want to be in New York. Peyton Manning or Aaron Rodgers? Aaron Rodgers. Tony Romo or Michael Vick? Michael Vick, baby. Adrian Peterson or LaDainian Tomlinson? Purple Jesus. All right. Joe Montana or Brett Favre? Joe Montana. Sidney Rice or Jerry Rice? Gamecocks last and rule forever. Sidney Rice. Dabo Sweeney or Scooby-Doo? Where are you? <laughs> Scooby. Uh, Lady Gaga or Lady Antebellum? Let's go with Lady Antebellum. Lou Holtz or Steve Spurrier? Steve Spurrier. Big year or Tupac? Well, Tupac's still alive. Uh, Groucho's Deli or Andy's Deli? Groucho's. Five points of the Vista. Well, I'm old and more mature the Vista. Hootie and the Blowfish or the Beatles? Let it cry. <laughs> Charleston or Myrtle Beach? Chucktown, baby. Tiger Woods or Ron Jeremy? I love Tiger. Chris Rock or Jerry Seinfeld? Chris Rock. Halle Berry or Scarlett Johansson? Halle Berry. Eva Mendez or Beyonce? Oh, Beyonce. SEC or all the other conferences combined? <laughs> There's the only conference in football. BCS or playoff? I would love to see a playoff. Marcus Lattimore or any other back in the country? Marcus Lattimore. So what you, what you doing now, Corey? Sports Talk Radio. Sports Radio 1400 team you can catch every day, uh, 3 to 6. Also, I do uh, Giants for Christ Ministries, which I established uh, back in 2003. Uh, go to different churches and speak, men's groups, youth groups, things like that. So... Uh, uh, as you can tell, I speak a lot, yeah. and um, and I love doing it because it's all about encouraging, taking uh, those things we talked about, you know, and using it as a vehicle to try to touch young people and old people, whoever, just trying to encourage them. That man, you know, if you see a little guy from Paisley, South Carolina, five thousand people that uh, a lot of people said couldn't make it, but you can make it. You can do all things through Christ who gives you strength. Corey is uh, he he really doesn't like the spotlight as you can tell. Um, so I'm gonna say that uh, one more time for you. It's uh, it's Giants for Christ. Yes. Dot com. Giants for Christ at Yahoo. .com. At Yahoo. .com. Mm -hmm. and uh, and then also uh, he's on uh, Sports Talk 1400 uh, here in Columbia, and you can also get that online. 1400team.com. Yep, and it's uh, and it's uh, he's from three to six every day, and uh, I love this man. So uh, go Cox. Good looking man. All right.